Now I could go in here and do more to this. I could move these individual points around, um, but I don't want to get too bogged down in the finer points here because you can do that on your own time. But there we go. I think I've got it basically as good as I need. Now to check this, I probably want to hit F4 to turn off edged faces and hit Alt W so I can get a better sense of this. So we are seeing the loft there. We are seeing there's a bit of a discontinuity where it's not quite smoothed over there. So we can smooth it. It's pretty easy. I'll just select that object and add a smooth modifier. Scrolling down, doot and doot and do. All the way down, I'm looking for smooth. And what this does is it decides whether uh, an edge on a polygon object should be hard or soft based upon the angle between the two flat polygon faces. So you can see here, it looks really faceted. All I have to do is turn on auto smooth and uh, I can play around with this threshold. I might want to set that to like 45 or something because we're getting a little bit of glitchiness down here. And to correct that last little bit of weirdness, I'll go back to F4 to see edged faces. I'll go back to my loft shape and select that top circle once again. Now it's kind of hard to tell if it's actually selected or not, um, but there we go. I can turn the show end result off and that makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And in fact, I could adjust this as well, uh, either by scaling it here, or I could go back to the original circle and just reduce its radius. And we can get cleaner geometry this way. So it's all about trying to make this look as clean and nice as possible. And I think we're good. I can hit F4 once again. And that's pretty all right. It's not 100%, but I would give that a 95. We could go back and play with our scale deformation a little bit more, but I think this is probably good enough for now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save once again. Save as, and now we're up to chair version 9. So we're almost finished here. I just need to create one more crossbar here and then check the proportions overall to make sure that it matches the reference. So I'm going to now create a standard primitive box just here. And once again, we knew that that was going to be about an inch by an inch. Oops, except we want that to be wider. Set this height to be one inch, that is. Okay, Alt W, go over to my front view. Get that moved up, and now you can see it looks all white here in my front view, and that's because it's got a lot of segments. It's got all these segments because it remembered the segments we chose for the uh, back leg of the chair. So I need to go back into my modify panel and set that to just one. There we go. Move this up. It's not going to be exactly in the same place as that back brace. Okay, it's going to be a little bit higher as seen in the reference. Good. Okay, let's do a reality check here and see, does that look much like the reference? I think overall it could be made a little bit thinner. A lot of the pieces look like they're not quite proportioned exactly right. So uh, it's easy to fix these guys because we can go into the box and just reduce the length and width to maybe uh, 1.25 inches rather than 1.5 inches. So 1.25 and you'll see that reflects in both of the instances. Um, up here, that's, that's pretty close. We can go back into those chamfer box and, and reduce. In fact, it looks like it's the height that we want to reduce. I see. Okay, so that's more like on the order of you know 1.5 inches. Okay, or even less, maybe 1.25. That's better. Okay, so that's a little, it's a little bit more elegant here relative to the sort of blocky version that I did in version one. Okay, and I'm looking at my seat and it looks like it needs to be puffed up as well too. So that's easy enough to do. I can just select the line that we made before. 
I'll hit Alt W, get in close, and you'll see the little line here. Go ahead and click on that guy. You might need to click a couple of times until you select it. And then select that top vertex and just move it up. That'll increase the thickness of the seat. And we can observe the results here. We can have our reference open at the same time and do them all at once until we can get this more or less looking right. Cool. And uh, finally, I think the last thing I, that I really want to do is uh, take one last stab at this loft. So I'll go back in there once again, back down into the loft, back into the scale deformer, and play around with this a little bit more. You can see how this is doing a more or less linear shape here. So I'll use my move control points, and you kind of have to experiment with this and see sort of, you know, what does it do? It's got characteristics of its own, and kind of have to play around until you sort of get what you want. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm going to hit F4 once again and look at this, and my level of detail is probably too high now at this point after I've done all that scale deformation. So I probably got too much going on here. So I'll go back into my skin parameters, play around with that a little bit. So the shape steps, okay. Okay, looks like we need lots of those. So let me give that value of maybe 10. And then the path steps, I can probably get away with fewer of those until we get a level of detail that seems somewhat reasonable. We're going to go ahead and finalize this model by attaching all the pieces together. I don't really need the loft pieces anymore. Let's go ahead and I'll just save over the top of the existing file. If I feel like it, I can just delete these curves, but it's probably better to simply hide them. So I'm going to select all of those curves and right click and choose hide selection. Good. Now I'm going to connect all the pieces together using editable poly. So I'm going to select this. This is the center. I'm going to convert that to editable poly. Right click, convert to, convert to editable poly. And I'm going to name it now since this is going to be the sort of masterpiece and everything's going to be connected to it. So we're going to end up with one big object. So I'm going to rename this now. This will be called chair wood. Then I'll use the attach tool. Okay, so here it is down in edit geometry. Attach. And I'll just go around and select all of the parts. Except for the seat cushion. And as you see, as I attach the parts, they change color. They're adopting the object color of the original object. Okay, I think that's it. So I'll click attach again and, and then move to make sure all right, so I've got it all connected to one piece. Now in this exercise, we're not actually doing UV layout, and that would be something that we would probably do before attaching. Um, but in this case, it's a bit out of scope for the exercise, so we're not going to do UV layout in this particular example. We'll just use a procedural map, which is a much simpler way of applying a texture that doesn't require mapping coordinates. Here I've got my cushion and I can convert that as well. So I will also right click and convert to editable poly. And now that bakes in the loft, so I gotta make sure I really want this before I do it. Okay, and now I've got those two pieces baked out and I will go and save as to, now we're up to version 10.